Marlow painted, Wabi Sabi is my hobby, Bobby, said Scheherazade. Breakdown or a breakthrough? Smarty said, art is a witch's brew. Fair, foul, foul, fair, abracadabra, gobble, goop, spit, dirty socks, dirty sex, the wretched, vulgar, ugly, all into the stew. Sugar, spice, everything nice, snails and puppy dog tails, Eduardo Pelosi, Mimo Rotella, toss them in too. Smarty could actually talk that way. Then he said, a good cook has clean hands. Marlo took that to mean, the good guys win, right? And all that implied, love, uh-huh. Marlo dreamed about Stefan Edlis, no brown. Smitten asks, how about browning? That's my last duchess painted on the wall, looking as if she were alive. I call that piece a wonder now. Frau Pandolf's hands worked busily a day, and there she stands. Together down, sir. Notice Neptune, though, taming a seahorse, thought a rarity, which Klaus of Innsbruck cast in bronze for me. And don't live Ferrari without admiring my Ferraris, parked upon a bed of carpets by Art Spitten. Note his clever nomenclature. It was Smitten talking to him in his sleep. Next morning he painted, move over, Fra Pandoff. Twelve feet by fifteen feet. And not in brown, in red. Red is good. Marlowe would tell it straight. Who, what, when, where, how. Could he do that? He'd seen something. Lucid, white hot. Examined what he'd seen from many angles as Donagon, the nine-sided polygon, had taught him. Always hunt for the poetic. Smitten told him, Use what you've got. You're good with words, Marlowe. Use words. Marlowe wanted metaphors he couldn't think of, like in Robert Haas's poem, A Story About the Body. A young composer at an artist's retreat is attracted to an older Japanese painter. A after a concert, he goes back with her to her room. Before they go in, she tells him she's undergone a double mastectomy. The composer welts, can't do it. Next morning finds a blue bowl she left for him on his porch. It looks to be full of rose petals, but under the rose petals, the bowl is full of dead bees. How do you think of that? You don't. You find it. Marlowe filled pads with words to paint. Gibber jabberish, biddle babblish, nonsensical, absurd. Blue bang, red bang, purple bang. Less is more. Less is a bore. Words that paint, painted words. Marlowe rarely came into the studio with ready words. The words had to surprise him, words he'd have no use for if he weren't painting. Not funny words, or wise words, or clever words, or profound, just unexpected. A line from Sylvia Plath, the snail's blue kisses like black apples. On cardboard on the floor, he found a list of words from Bleak House, Miss Flight's birds. He painted big, 12 feet by 15 feet. Hope, joy, youth, peace, rest, life, dust, ashes, waste, want, ruin, despair, madness, cunning, folly, words, wigs, rags, sheepskin, plunder, precedent, jargon, gammon, spinach. An aria from Puccini's La Boheme caught his ear. Vecchia Zimara, faithful old garment. These words he would also paint big, 12 feet by 15 feet. Listen, my venerable coat, I'm staying behind. You'll go on to greater heights. I give you my thanks. You never bowed your worn back to the rich or powerful. You held in your pockets poets and philosophers, as if in tranquil grottos. Now that those happy times have fled, I bid you farewell, faithful old friend, farewell. Marlowe was an observer, a witness, a scribe, a painter of last resort. His task was to capture the time spirit, dot, 
dot dash. Get it down as quick as it came. Not try to understand or judge or categorize, only to be faithful to the cosmos, as if he was tuned in to Cocteau's radio from the film Blood of the Poet. Revelation came all the time. Marlowe showed up, did the dance, said the prayer, attuned to a faraway galaxy, and waited, eager to know what would happen on the canvas next. He'd dial it down from the ether, let his hands do the work, and no thinking. Simply put, thinking was not his strong point. As Madame de Stahl said of her lover, speech is not his language. Marlowe used rough materials, found materials, affordable materials, available materials. What he sought in art, a voice, a look, a feel. His was a search for startling juxtapositions and searing allegories to evoke the raw force of a primitive mask of mud and hair with teeth looking very human. What he wanted was art as ominous as teeth, art with bite. Oh, the shark has pretty teeth, dear, and it shows them pearly white. Just a jackknife has McKeith, dear, and he keeps it out of sight. When the shark bites with his teeth, dear, scarlet bellows start to spread. Fancy gloves, though, where's McKeith, dear, so there's not a trace of red. Inspired by Kurt Vile from the canon song from Three Penny Opera he painted, they just might chop us up to make steak tartare.